for now we are going to focus on Tottenham and, and as I said there a bit of friction uh, between uh, Ange Postacoglu and I would suggest the majority of maybe everyone else associated with Tottenham as, as he put it both inside and outside of the club labelling the foundations as uh, pretty fragile after a 2-0 uh, defeat to Manchester City and, and the reason for that comment of course when you put it into context is the fact that Spurs went into that game knowing if they did beat Manchester City, it would have given their fierce rivals Arsenal a an advantage in the Premier League title race. Now, for me, uh, and again, I've said this quite a lot on this podcast, maybe I need to get rid of the picture behind me, but full disclosure, I am a Tottenham fan, uh, and I've not been shy on this podcast previously in stating that, yes, I, I did fancy us to, to lose that game because it would mean more in the grand scheme of things. Our season was, was looking like petering out and we didn't have much to play for. Yes, we still had the opportunity. A slim one, a very, very slim one of getting into the Champions League ahead of Aston Villa. Um, but there was probably a bigger chance of us disrupting Arsenal season than actually doing anything to, to you know change ours or, or you know improve ours at all. That was my belief behind it. You know, It wasn't going to have much of it. But it seems that Ange Postacoglu takes issue with people like me who uh, maybe showed a lack of ambition. But it's an interesting thing here this this you know the honeymoon period has probably been over for a while now you know once Tottenham started um being unable to maintain the brilliant start that they had under Ange Postacoglu and you know injuries and everything else factored into it but it's one thing to call out your players it's another thing to call out your fans and possibly even colleagues within the club as well as I said there's comments inside and outside of the club that the uh, foundations are pretty fragile and it's uh an interesting uh, decision from Mr. Postacoglu and an interesting choice of words. Yeah, um, I think, you know, Ange has became one of the, the Premier League's real characters. He's kind of got a, a real identity. And, you know, I think that is something not just Tottenham fans, but everybody took to particularly early in the season when, when Spurs were flying high. Um, it, it was certainly bold for him to come out the way he did after the match. I think that's in many respects, probably how you want your manager. You want a winner in charge of your club, particularly if you want to kind of make that leap to, to being a, a truly successful club. And I think he has every right to be maybe frustrated that the atmosphere isn't how he would have liked to inspire a win. Um, I think particularly inside the club, you would kind of hope to stamp out any notion of, of not winning in any game because um, that, that is probably not healthy, no matter how lighthearted it's perhaps been set in um i think with the fans it's a little bit more difficult i think this is probably a tottenham fan base that are not short of reminders of having uh allowed arsenal to win a title at white hart lane in the past um and you know these things do hang around regardless of what um postacogli wants to say about bragging rights not kind of adorning the walls of, of tottenham hotspur stadium these kind of moments and, you know, facilitating an Arsenal title win would hang around a lot longer in all likelihood than Tottenham winning the Champions League. That That is just kind of how it is. And I think it's just really interesting that Postacoglu kind of noted about being a winner. He wants this to be a winning team, but he's not somebody who's necessarily win at all costs. He, he kind of sticks to his aesthetic over the kind of win at all costs mentality. He wants to see Tottenham play a certain way. Um, he's not bothered... So, so much by set pieces that they don't concern him despite Tottenham's frailty. So it is kind of like, it's exactly what you, what you want to hear from Postacoglu, but he's not an entirely win at all costs manager either. Um, I couldn't stand why people perhaps are a little bit more frustrated with him. Perhaps if Tottenham had had a better end to the season, they wouldn't have been in that position and they could have quite happily cheered on the team against Man City as well. But I think overall, it's probably a little bit of healthy friction. I think, you know, he's not going to have too many hard feelings to Tottenham supporters for too long. Uh, providing Tottenham continue to improve, I don't think the Tottenham fans will have any hard feelings over what he said. They're probably, you know, one of those things, maybe it hurts so much because there's a slight bit of truth in it. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, I guess for me, it's one where both supporters and manager would probably write in the end. Just looking for next season as well, and I'm going to kind of break the ranks here of being a host and, and kind of offer my opinion. I mean, to be fair, anyone who listens to this podcast knows that I'm, I'm not sure I'm doing that anyway. But for me, I think the, the comments from, from uh, Ange after the game, I think they've backed, he, he's backed himself into a really difficult position for next season. Likelihood is, you know, yes, we're still saying that there's a chance that Spurs might end up in the Europa Conference League and that would result, uh, that, that would rely on them losing to Sheffield United, Chelsea winning their final game, and then Manchester United winning the FA Cup. Now, which one of those three ones you want to pick as the most unlikely one to happen? Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. But 
it's still a chance. Anyway, the Spurs are in Europe next year and, and it's a case of which competition. But it doesn't matter the competition. And Postacogli has now come out and, and kind of suggested uh, that he needs to change the culture of the club, needs to make it a winning club. Ergo, Spurs will be one of the favourites in that European competition next year, regardless of which one it is, to win it. And, and you know, equally the, the AFL Cup as well, the Carabao Cup as well, you know, named a weakened side against Fulham earlier this year. But now he can't do that. He suggested that he wants to create this winning culture. Well, you can't go and name Brian Hill at centre-half against, you know, Slovakian part-timers or whatever it is that Spurs... And that isn't meant to be a, a facetious comment, but that's it, you know, he's... You know, he wants to say that we need to show ambition, we need to be ambitious, and, and he's removed that option for him to potentially rotate his squad in those games because, you know, for, for me, as a Tottenham fan, I've, uh, you know, looking back last year, I was I was out in Prague covering uh, West Ham's winning the Europa Conference League, a competition that Spurs messed up in the 2021-22 season. People will point to the fact that, oh, well, you know, you, we, we, we couldn't play against Stad Rene, we lost the points because of COVID and, and we couldn't play him and it was a terrible thing. No, no, we lost to Slovenian part-timers that year under Antonio Conte. That's what cost us going through, not not being able to play against Rennes. And that was a competition that Spurs should have won. And I've not seen Spurs win a competition now in 16 years. 2008 was the last time. I was getting confirmed as a teenager. That's how long ago it was. Good little Catholic boy that I still was at the time. I don't think I've been in the church since. It's been 16 years since we won a trophy. Any trophy will do. And you want to change this, this winning culture. And Andrew Postacogli wants to do that. Well, he has to name the strongest squad as possible in, in that team. Uh, in, in those competitions next season. I think he's backed himself into a really dangerous corner here, but we'll see. You can't have it both ways, Angie. You have to, if you want to change the culture, you have to give it your all in those competitions which are winnable. But what does it mean for Spurs now going into the summer, Scott? What is it, where does he kind of see the squad, the players? What's the most pressing issue for Spurs? For me, I, I think it's probably striker looking at, you know, again, you know, using Tuesday as a prime example. Enough chances probably to score against Manchester City, but just lacking that clinical finisher up top. Yeah, yeah, and I think after losing Harry Kane, even with somebody as high quality as Son, you know, meant to kind of fill in that role, it, it is gonna gonna leave a massive gap. And I think what's really telling us, I think since you know Spurs have perhaps maybe struggled isn't the right word, but they've not maintained the the pace that they set early in the season. There's been this kind of notion from Postecoglou as well that. This is a team still being built in his image. They're not necessarily all his players, despite a few sign-ins last year. So I think, you know, they, they're going to need so much more depth, particularly with European football. I think it's easy to forget, perhaps, that they've had a bit more of a free run at the Premier League this year. Um, and, you know, that is going to bring its own difficulties. I think, you know, they, they do have a good set of forward players and likes, you know, Brennan Johnson, Kulisevsky, Son, um, and uh, obviously, the defense you would say has probably improved with Dragosin, Mickey Van de Ven, and to be able to uh, complement Romero. So I do think it is in maybe that central midfield position. If you lose Hoyberg this summer, I think there's always talk of him leaving as his contract runs down. And I think it's just really kind of whittling down to the players that Postecoglou wants because once once he's a year year in. Once he's made comments, like you've said, that kind of put pressure on to win titles, you can't really afford to carry the passengers anymore. They they all need to be his players who are ready to play his style of football. And yeah, it, it's going to, I guess, be on Postacoglu's head next time. 